We own now. Um, can you see the little screeny thing? Good enough? What did we talk about last week? Naaman dipping seven times in the a river son. and the prodigal son. And both of those stories were about ego and how to kill us. You know? Naaman in his powerful, he a gangster, make it rain, shit, while his body was falling apart. You know? And, um, and they finally said, it's only a simple thing they ask you to do. Why would you not do that? And in order for him to be able to do that, he had to allow his ego to die. <coughs> he had to be real. He had to strip naked in front of all them people that thought he was something. Except they talked about him behind his back because he stunk. <laughs> Imagine who was washing his clothes in this film of meat juice. <laughs> stunk, yeah. And then the prodigal boy who thought he was somebody. Had to figure out that uh, he prostituted himself. It's sim and it's a similar thing to the story of Adam and Eve, where God says, "Where Adam? Where are you?" I happen to think God knew where Adam was, but Adam did not have an idea where he was. He was squatting in the bushes with shit in his pants, hiding behind the couch. Adam, did you shit your pants? <laughs> no, this woman you made me did. She made me shit my pants. No, 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 you, I mean, you made me shit my pants. You made me like this. You know? <laughs> Um, and all God wanted to do was clean his ass up. That's all God wants to do with us. You know, we running around with a load in the breeches. Quit talking about my shit, look at your shit. <laughs> well, all that does is keep your ass shitty. You know? And grace, becoming a little child, is laying down let it be fixed. And then y'all got young ones, you change their diapers still? They don't go, well, I don't think you're doing it right there. You just, you know, it's my penis big enough? I just don't, I don't know. You know. They just laying there going, hey, how you doing? Here, I'm pee on you. Shh. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So, and my boy, um, I want him to talk a little bit because I'm tired of hearing myself anyway, um, about his process. And it's been, what, three years or so? It's been, it's been. You know, we started at one place. You had some insight. Yeah. You went out, hit another brick wall or whatever, came back, had some new insight. Um, and then went to Gulf Shores. <laughs> Oh, come here and talk. Stand up. Here, you want to put this on? I think you nipple with it. You freak. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rocco would know. Oh, yeah. He and I have a big time. Yeah. Cheers, bro. Test one, two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, I've known Till for several years now, and 
I think we first met in, I guess, 2013, 2014, somewhere around there in that area. And at that time, I was, you know, doing it up and came here to Turning Point. And it was a little hectic around here. I was getting drunk out here on the, the porch at night. And there was all kinds of craziness going on. There just wasn't no, wasn't no leadership here. And, there wasn't no direction for Turning Point at the time. It was it was basically at a standstill. But I uh, made a whatever you want to call it promise to myself that I would stay and hang around and and try to see this place grow some more and and try to and maybe do some things myself and uh, hell you know. Till knows how it was around here. It was balls to the wall. Good. And uh, wasn't nobody getting help down here. You know, everybody was just whatever. You, class was optional, you know. Waking up was optional, you know. Doing anything around here. Ian knows. Some other, Brian remembers. Uh, and uh, I stuck around and I, and I stayed an extra like three months and, and Till you know, came to class one day and he said, you know, uh, go down the end of the driveway and pick up a rock. And I didn't see the importance in it at the time. Can and I say something about that? Yeah, yeah, say something. It's people would come to me all the time saying, uh, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? What do I need to do? I was one of them. And so I said, well, every day for 30 days, go down the end of the driveway and pick up a rock and bring it back. And that takes 45 seconds, a minute, maybe. Okay. So there was about three or four of us, I guess, that, you know, wanted to try to do something different. And uh, so every morning I'd go down there and I'd just pick up a rock and, you know, do it the next day and the next day and the next day. And I just kept them in a, a sack in my room and... You know, it just became like mundane, you know, just, just go do it, go do it. But then after a few weeks, I started picking out a, a rock that I liked uh, versus some other rocks. <laughs> and it was just something to, I, I guess, to break the monotony of it. But I didn't understand the importance at the time. And to this day, you know, I, there's still, I, I'm still a work in progress, but I see the importance now after working with him and him working with me and, and, and all that. But so I did that and I started really looking, looking deep down in me and trying to figure some things out. But see, that was the problem. I was, I was trying to figure things out, which I, and, and I didn't understand that whole concept about you already know the answers at the time. And uh, so I thought I had to do and do and do and do some, sh you know, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, and 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 I, I I just kept plugging along, and you know I ended up deciding to to leave, and uh, this is twenty, I guess twenty thirteen. Dave had already came, and and it, you know ruffled everybody's sheets a little bit and tightened up around here and it started to become a better place but it's a lot better now than it was than it was then and I think everybody that was here at the time can agree but somewhere somewhere in that getting the rock and and trying to think I had to do a bunch of things uh, I, I, I didn't really look at myself I didn't really I didn't really look at maybe the reasons or that I, I that I kept going back out, that I kept wanting to get high, that I kept, you know, wanting to do whatever. And uh, but that but that that seed that he planted in me about picking up the rock uh, started making more sense. Well, I came back, I, I got out, I, I stayed clean for maybe a month. You know, just, you know, white knuckling it, you know, you know how it is, you know, get you a little clean time, uh, get you a decent job and, and all that. And, but, but the real, the, the root of the problem 
I hadn't come to the realization of, of any of the real roots of my problems. And, and it's not the drugs and it's not, you know, all that. It, it's, it's deeper. And, uh, and so I ended up uh, relapsing, going hard on heroin. Y'all know how that is. Some of y'all know how that is. It take you down through there quick. And within, so I'd had like six months here, which I say about three months, because the first three months I was just, I was drinking four locos out here and taking as much vivas in as I could and whatever, you know how that is. We find way, we find stuff that'll, that'll do the trick. But, uh, so I had about, I guess about four months sober at the time and then it just took me all the way down through there again. And, uh, and, uh, and so I decided, I, I decided to, maybe I need, maybe I need to get away again. And, uh, and so I came back in basically about a year later, a year after the first time that I was here. And immediately, Till like, what the hell are you doing back, you know? Shit. What brought you back? And it's, welcome home. Welcome home. <laughs> and it's still, and, it, and, and even when he says that, like if you've been here before and, and Till asks you what brought you back, and you say whatever, that ain't the reason. And, it, and, it's, and, it, and it, he does that as a tool to get you thinking about what really brought you back. You know, what, what started this whole train wreck. And, uh, and so I was like, I like crack. I just threw something out there random. It was just bullshit. And he's like, man, you full of shit. And he called me on it, which is good. I, I have to have somebody call me on my bullshit. Because if not, I'll believe the bullshit. And, uh, and uh, I was like, it's a female this time or something. You know, I think that's... Crack. crack. Real crack. Not that crack you smoke. Well, you can't smoke it. it <laughs> ain't no smoke going to come off of it, but... Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I, I most, most of my relapses have always... And, and now that I've, I've been able to work through a lot of stuff, and I, I can, I can kind of pinpoint it to, to a few things, and there was a female always involved, always, you know, whatever. If they like to do dope, you can ride. We can go do dope, whatever, you know. That's basically how, how most of my, you know, train wrecks started. And, uh, and so, 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 uh, I guess, uh, this was the second time, this was 14 when I was here. And, uh, and so I start, I, I, I came to Till and I was like, you know, like, I got this going on and, and this situation, me and my mom, we're so codependent and, and she just enables me, and, and I can't say no, and I just ask, and she gives, and and so he's like, well, that might be, you know, that might be a legitimate thing to work on, and uh, and I was like, yeah, I can work on that, you know, but really that still wasn't, it, it was get point me in the right direction, and I was getting there, but there was still, it still wasn't all the way there yet. I still wasn't looking at me. I still would. Yeah, you can chime in any time. What will happen, especially if you go to your psychotherapy people or you read your new Highlands book or whatever, you can get you a label and think you've got an answer. Because you started talking, talking about codependent. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. shit, that's yeah. it. I'm codependent. Me and my mom are codependent. Like, that's what it is. So it is. Yeah. It so, it, so I was like, so he was like, well, why, don't you, why don't you work on that shit, you know? Write down some things that you need to tell your mom to, so she can tell you no. And you know, y'all know how that goes. They, you know, either either they're gonna say, "All right, it's all you, baby," or they're gonna continue to to help you to get six feet under. And that's basically how my mom and me. That's how our relationship was. Now she. 
totally different, night and day. But I thought that was the reason. I thought that was the reason I kept getting high. I kept going back out. I kept, I kept, uh, you know, doing what I do, and keep getting the same, same result back here, or in detox, or sick, or trying to call the doctor, or get some, some Suboxone or something, or whatever, whatever was the thing. Because my thing was opiates, and that was my main thing. But I ain't gonna turn nothing down, you know. But, but that was point. I was moving it, moving in in a good direction, and so I started working on that. And so I was here another, you know, couple months, I guess. And uh, I quit doing the rock thing. I thought, man, I'm done with that, you know. I, I did the rock thing too. I, I want to do something. That didn't work. That didn't work. Shit. I need to try something else. Something's got to work, you know. And so I did that. I worked with my mom. I was like, Mom, you just got to say no to me. I, that's, what's, that's my problem. And she was like, so I'm your problem? And I was like, not, well, not necessarily, but... Can I have $50? Yeah, man. <laughs> hey, you can give me a carton of cigarettes? Yeah, some Mountain Dews? Come on. Break, you up, break me off some, you know? And I was still doing that shit, that same shit, but telling her to tell me no, you know? That, that's, that's how we work. We're crazy. You know, we're selfish. We want what we want, but we want, it to, but we want somebody else to fix us or fix, their, fix them so it'll fix us. And, and that's not how it goes. And, and so, uh, I don't know. I, I, we started going to, we went to church in my hometown in McCalla a few times. Uh, Pastor Dave, he, we're from the same town, and uh, he wanted us to go out there a few times. And, and so we went out there a few times. I met, this, I met this girl there. She was nice. She was sweet. She sang in the choir. I was thinking, ha, oh, praise Jesus, I found them. They're out there, there's hope. And so we started communicating, you know, and I, I left here and I started working again, same shit. Yeah. Yo, were you communicating while I was here? On the slide? Uh, uh -huh. I don't think so, for real. I don't I don't think so because I did say, hey, add me on Facebook. You know, I'm at turning point. I'm I got you know. I'd graduate, whatever, in like all. I think it was like August to 14 is when I graduated, and uh, I was like, "Hey, me on Facebook, you know, cool, you know." She was telling me about this, this, uh, this small group they got at church, and this, and, that, and it all sounded great, man. It all sounded wonderful. I was like, "Man, I, this is what this is the direction I need to go in," but I for, but I forgot how I can manipulate the hell out of a woman, and uh, I was like. You know, cause, cause I, you know, we took, we've, we've probably took some good girls down through there before in our past, you know, and it sounded good, it looked good, it, it smelled good, it, it just everything looked, you know. From, well, did, did we do the then? No, uh, we, we did it, and uh, I'm getting to that. I'm sorry, I'm taking a lot of time, but. Uh, and so, like, I thought, man, this is great. This is wonderful. So, what did I do? I left. I went back to Mama's. Like, I'm, I'm coming back home. You know, we'll stay there for a little while. And I have to say, Jesus' Probably going to get me a little play, get try to get me a place, and blah, blah, blah. You know how we talk good game. And, uh, and so, I, I, I left, and I, and I had a job immediately after getting out of here. And so I was, I was right back into work, right back doing what I, I know to do. Cause even in my addiction, I always made money. Like I, I got to support my habit somehow, at least part of the ways, you know. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna work, and uh, you know, stay at Mama's for a minute, you know, and and see what I can do with this, with this girl at church. You know, so I started going to church with her. Everything was good. You know, started going to this small group, and everything was good and good and good. Well, some old crack at work came up to me and said, hmm, I'm gonna, "What you, you know, just talking, you know, just kicking, you know, kicking it, and just 
going back into my old, you know, like, oh, what can I get out of her, you know, on the side, you know, like, I'm dating this girl from church, you know, and it's wonderful, and she's, she's whining and dining me and buying me clothes and cigarettes and whatever I need, just taking care of my ass, you know, like, basically, and treating me good, you know, like, steak dinners, good, and I'm like, I got this good thing over here, but man, this man, this looks good right here. I just, I just, you know, I keep it quiet, you know. I just do this a little bit on the side, you know what I'm saying? And uh, and next thing I know, I find out she's taking Xanax and blah 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 and lower tabs, and I'm we're working, you know, six shifts a week. I'm tired. I'm hurting. <laughs> I'm stressed. So I was like, man, why don't you throw me, why you throw me a few of them Zans or some of the tabs? And so that starts the cycle again. And still don't know why. I had a good thing going, man. It was great. Good girl in school at Alabama. Just, you know, like had, had her shit together, you know, like was a manager in an apartment complex, just all, and whatever, you know, but just a good thing going on, but I still wanted this right here. And, uh, and so that, that spiraled really fast. Yeah, I mean, it went down like, whew, like, as fast as that golden mower and kills them, them flies out there. That's how fast, that's how fast I went down this time. Because the root of the problem was still under the surface. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. And that's what I kept telling him. I just can't figure it out. He said, there ain't nothing to figure out. You already know. You just refuse to look at it and pay attention to it. That's what me and Wes and some, I was saying out there. We just, there's stuff we don't pay attention to that we need to pay attention to that's either going to help us grow or it's going to, if we don't pay attention to us, it's going to take us right back through there. Because I'm, I'm like everybody sitting right here. You know, we're all the same. You know, we're one bad decision away from consequences and more, more bad stuff happening. You know, because that's all, with me, that's all it takes is one decision. You know, and, and I'm gone. I forget everything. And so that, that, that spiraled real fast, but I held it together. I, I, I came back out of it. I was like, I gotta go, I gotta go do this, I gotta go do this, I gotta, and that ended really bad with her. And I'll and I speed it up. I ain't gonna speed it up, I'm gonna talk. But uh, <laughs> I, something happened this past weekend where, that involved that girl in, in a just coincidence kind of way. And I'll, t I'll tell you about it later, but. Uh, so that was in that was about 2015, early 2015, give or take. And uh, I was like, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. So mom had done. Mom, mom's fed up with my shit. She's like, you got to do something. You got blah blah blah. And and it's just back and forth, back and forth. And uh, well, I get a job. As I always do, I get a job and I bounce back and, and, and get it together again and, and hold it down for a little while and I get it together, you know, lose it again and get it together again and, and you know, you know the cycle. And uh, speed it up a little bit. Last year, about January of last year, I was working at Ruby Tuesday and Bessemer, which anybody in here knows restaurant business for us can be, can be bad. And, but it was good money, you know, it was all right money. I was, you know, I was running some shit around there, which made me feel good. And, you know, all them cute servers walking by, knowing I got a title and shit. It was, it was good. And, uh, you know, because I liked that. I liked the attention. I'm an attention whore. Like, I love attention. Like, please give me attention. I'll say something three times before, you know, just so you hear me and respond to me. And uh, so it was all right. I had a little title, you know. I was I was doing doing good, you know. And I uh, had had my little apartment at my granddad's house in the basement, you know, just paying him a little bit of money to, you know, for the bills and whatnot, and just doing my thing until that little piece of crap walked up that I couldn't say no to, and she was blonde and she had big boobs, and 
And Jason Lewis knows who she is. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, well, in the, well, back it up. An old, an old friend, an old girl that I went to school with uh, uh, hit me up on Facebook and was like, hey, what are you doing, blah, blah, blah. I always had a crush on you and blah, blah, blah. And, and that's, uh, that's what led me to Gulf Shores. And uh, so I started dating her before I met this crack. And so she's crazy just like me, but I was hoping that two crazies make at least one halfway sane, but that shit don't work. And uh, but I didn't figure that out until July of this year. And it took me, you know, a lot of, yeah, I could have avoided a lot of stress and, and pain and, and things like that. And so I met this, little, met this little side piece of crack at work and we started taking pills and popping pills and, you know, texting and while she's living with her old man and, and, and you know, and I didn't see nothing wrong with it, shit. Send me a picture of your tits. You know, there ain't nothing wrong with it. It's all good. It's on Snapchat. It'll disappear in 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so everybody at work knew that we was, we was doing stuff and on the side and, and they thought, they thought I was the, the drug dealer up there. Another crazy story about that, that happened this past weekend too, that I ain't even told you about. Uh, Cause like they were ready to fire me. Like my boss was like, "What's wrong with you?" My GM was like, "What's wrong with you? Like you've been working with us for a year, and all of a sudden you're just like disappearing. You won't. We can't find you, and you're on the clock. Where are you at? What are you doing? I'm in the bathroom getting high. You know, I'm shooting dope in the bathroom that some other little server chick getting it delivered up there. You know, and it's just going bad. But I think it's good, which is crazy. But that's that's how crazy we are. Uh, and so fast forward about another month or two, this this little side thing's still going on. She finds out, or doesn't really find out, but catches wind. Some girl at work knows her, my girlfriend. And it mentions, uh, you know, mentions some stuff to her and, you know, and, and so she adds this one on Facebook and starts, yeah, Facebook, yeah, there you go. Problem right there, but, I mean, you can't live with it, you can't live without it, right? Anyways, uh, so some, some shit goes down right there. I'm stressed fuck out. Excuse my language. But that's how I felt. Like, oh, I can't do this. Like, I'm just gonna get high. I'm just gonna sit here and I'm gonna get high. I'm gonna let this settle itself out. Well, it, it calmed down. And then it started back up. And I went on about a 10 day bar binge, popping Xanax bars all day long. And uh, ended up getting, getting some legal, getting into some legal matters. I'm not gonna go into it, but. Uh, I'm all over Facebook on on uh, camera doing some you know doing something I shouldn't have been doing, but I did not have a clue what the hell was going on. I I didn't even know what was going on in here. Like I was gone. Like y'all know how that shit does to you. I was just gone. And then when the detective showed up at at work, I was like, oh shit, what the hell did I do? Like what's going on? And, uh, and so anyways, I had to go turn myself in, had to get bonded out, uh, decided to come back to Turning Point. I was like, Dave, man, it's bad. Like, I had to deactivate my Facebook. That's the first thing I said to him. He's like, <laughs> you stupid. I was like, I had to deactivate my Facebook, Dave. I've got to come back. Like, I can't, I can't, I can't be. I can't be seen in town. I don't even want to go. I don't even want to go to the Piggly Wiggly. It's real bad. Like, it's real bad, Dave. It's bad. <laughs> All right, then. Well, come on. So, I come back. 
And Till, once again, says, you know, what happened? You know, like, and me and him, we're, fr we're friends on Facebook and still friends on Facebook. What about it? Man, we go. All right. Oh, okay. All right. And uh, all the way that far back? <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, I'm just going to go where I'm at because it'll break my... Damn, it's 11. Man, Shit, it's almost 11 30. Keep going, bro. But, uh, anyways, so I came back. I was like, Dave, I got to get back. I got to get back. I got to. I got to. Man, I'm dying. I can't even go out in public. He said, I know. I saw it. I was like, Shh. Oh, man, I'm so embarrassed. Now I'm ashamed. I'm, you know, and the enemy just pounds me, man. I'm like, man, I can't go, man. I can't show my face, man. Everybody's seen that shit, you know? And uh, just that, that guilt and that shame and, and uh, condemnation and everything, just all of it just, just coming on me. And so I finally agree to come back. Dave is three now. Tres. Uno, dos, tres. Tres. Three. And uh, for Fernando back there, what's up, Fernando? Glad you're here, man. Stay. Uh, and uh, and so Till's like, what brought you back? Crack. Again. It's all crack, man. It started, it started with a female. But I, I, I didn't know why. I didn't know why. Like, why? I, it's them. It's them. They're crazy. It's them. They're crazy. Just like, just like in the garden. It was her. It was her. She made me eat it. She made me eat it. I, I didn't want to do it, but she said, I ain't giving you all this till you eat this. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> she was, uh, you know what I mean? But, and so I was like, it's, it's, it's these crazy women, Till. I just like these crazy women, man. I don't know what it is. I'm just attracted to crazy. <laughs> he said, shit. He said, you just a crack whore. <laughs> I was like, come again. I was like, I ain't no whore. And that started, that started a process. That started a thought process in me. I don't know what y'all's definition of a whore is, but it's definitely somebody that runs around and loves attention. And, uh, and so he, he, said, he said, you know, I started talking to him a lot. Me and Till started talking a lot. And, and I was still with this girl. Now, this is last year about give or take around May, I came back. And I was just, I thought I was done. I thought I was ready, which I'll speed it up and, and tell you a little bit about what happened. And, but uh, I was like, man, I just, uh, I don't know. I got, this, I got this girl over here that I've been with for a year and a half. She loves me. She, all, her, all her family is saying, leave him, leave him, leave him. And what she, pro we probably should have separated then anyways. But, uh, and, and our relationship was, was crazy. Shannon, Shannon can vouch for it. When we were over, when I was over at Transition House, there would be plenty of crazy. screaming matches on the phone and, and this and that. But I loved her. I loved her, man. I loved her. She rode, she's riding with me, you know. Her whole family's telling her to, to, to leave me, but yet she's riding, you know. What am I going to do, kick her out of the car? But then, on the other hand, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to, you know, because that still keeps me, keeps that little part of me that I ain't never looked at satisfied. You know, that, that attention that I just got to have somebody love me. You know, I need, some, I need her love. I need, I need love. And really, I didn't even love myself. I didn't even know myself. I, I'm learning about myself, but I really didn't know myself. And uh, when Teal called me a whore, it kind of, it pissed me off at first. I ain't no damn whore. Stepped on your vagina. Yeah. <laughs> hey, and, then, and then on top of that, he said, you're a fat whore. And I was like, oh, oh, hell no. You done, you done, you done hurt me twice now. What he was doing, I didn't realize it, but he was he was getting me to look at me instead of looking at everybody else and trying to fix them so 
I would never fix myself or I would never have to look at the real me, you know, and the real issues. Somebody cut that air on? I'm a little warm. But, and so that, that, it, that, that, that got my thinking going in that direction. Like, what does he mean by that? What does he mean by that? What do you mean that I'm, I'm a whore? He said, he said, all them little crack whores you like, you're that crack whore. I thought about it. He said, why don't you think about that and come back and, and talk to me next week and, and tell me what you think about that. And so I did. I thought about it. I thought about it. I was like, what? You know, what? 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 But that's what I am. I'm that attention. I want to be in the middle. I want everybody to do and do and do for me and look at me and, and treat me and love me and and say, oh, you got so much potential, and, and bitch, <laughs> fuck you. And, uh, but really inside, you know, I can't even look at me because I feel, I feel like a piece of shit. I feel like, you know, if people really knew who I am, they, they wouldn't like me. They wouldn't even want to be in the same room with me. They'd definitely not leave their purse around me. You know, uh, you know, and all these and all these these emotions started coming up in me, and I went and talked to him. I'm like, man, I, let's talk about this. Let's 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 talk through some of this, like, cause I'm 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 fucked up. Like you got me fucked up, like for real, like, and I was because I was still trying to to do this over here with my with my girl. And still, and, and try to work on me at the same time, and it don't work. Can I say this? Yeah. I didn't fuck you up. I know. No, wait, let me say. Yeah, you know what I'm here. Okay. I didn't fuck you up. Uh, I showed, I helped you look at the fucked up that you had always been. Right. <laughs> because you were looking outside for the fix. Yeah. And and the fix was right here. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he told me, he said, uh, I'm going to read it. Uh, he said, uh, well, I don't remember exactly how you put it, but. Uh, let me say, let me say. Yes, yeah, yeah. We started talking about, because um, we had 18 years of history by now. <laughs> <laughs> um, Many sessions. <laughs> but we were talking about his relationship to the female. And this is not a, a critique of his mother at all. Um, because can't nobody take you and you can't take nobody and know where they don't want to go. You know? If they talk to you more than 30 seconds, then that's on me. Right. Okay. But, um, and we started exploring some of these deeper. You said, I feel like shit, but yeah. put some words to that. Okay. You felt ugly. Ugly. You felt weak. Yeah. You felt not, inter not interesting. You felt whatever. At the core of you. There's a lot of words, and I'm trying to... But be thinking yeah. about it. Yeah, I'll be thinking about it. Um, and, and I was doing, back then, I was doing some new work on dreams and and some of the work that I do and have done in terms of the beloved, um, there is a, when the, the Greek folks think about the soul as male and female, the, for the man, their soul is feminine. You know, so like you have dreams of women and stuff, that's your spiritual, darker, feminine side. Uh, men typically, when they talk or when they talk about a woman's soul, it's in the masculine. And so you have some. Some of y'all may have read a poet named Rumi, who talks about the beloved lot. Uh, that's what that's about. Uh, through we've got the, the Song of Songs, the Song of Songs, which is basically esoteric uh, erotica in the Bible. Bored and not, you can read that and touch yourself. <laughs> um, in the whole narrative of the Christian story, uh, bride and groom. And then the, the final chapter of the Christian story is the bride and groom will, will consummate.
decimate their union again. Is this making it's not, you know, the sheep don't motivate me, but consummation of a union kind of gets me excited, you know. There you go. Um, it's, so, um, he and I were talking about this stuff and some of the stuff I'd written in my own journey, where, and I told him how what I started doing was writing poetry to myself. Yeah. You know? um, and then I told him to. So you go. Yeah, he told me to do it because, he, you know, there was a lot of words that I used to describe myself at the time, and and were very demeaning, and uh, that I, I did feel ugly. I did feel very unattractive. I did feel, uh, you know, low self-esteem you know, really had no confidence, uh, just those are some of the, uh, they're not really words, they're, they are words, but you know, it, it's, uh, sometimes it's hard to really describe how you really feel, you know what I mean? And when you yeah. put... Okay. <laughs> what you discovered was what you were writing to these women and thinking about these women. Yeah. That's where we kind of started. Yeah. It? Yeah. That's what he needed to turn around and write right to myself. Because your inner self is always going to be reflected in your outer stuff. Always. The conflicts that you have, that's in here. And I talked a couple of weeks about fractals. And whatever that root pattern is, we're going to uh, manifest it in the world. And. So if I'm out here trying to change the world, I'm never going to change my pattern. If I change this woman, that woman, this man, this whatever, if I make money, if I, that pattern is not going to be effective. And it's going to, I can go to California, I can shop at Walmart, I can shop at Saks, but the same pattern will continue. And so, uh, and he was projecting this stuff onto these girls, on his mama, onto the authority figures in his life. Um, but the, the conflict was not with them. Because that's something we go out and we create. You didn't know these women. You know, he created all this stuff and the pattern repeated over and over and over and over and over again. And so what I suggested is he begin um, these, these deep longings, these feelings that he has, address that little boy in there. Or that, well, the beloved first. The beloved. Because the beloved the feminine. is, is he turned himself into a whore. Trying to get some things made. Okay, good. All right. So, yeah. So he got me, he said, why don't you write a, I don't know if you called it a love letter or a letter or a poem or just write something to yourself. And I'm trying to, that you want to feel like you want somebody to tell you about yourself that you don't, e that I didn't believe, but it's what I wanted, you know, it was what I was looking for, you know, and I was getting to know myself at this time still too, and, and I thought this was weird, I thought, you know, I ain't gonna get nothing, you know. Well, can I get something out of this? And and uh, but you did the rock, so you I did the rock. I started so you, so the rock started it. So you yeah, had a history. I had a history of, of trying to do something, and he said, "Quit trying, it, just do it." And so, as as <laughs> as much as I I didn't want to do it, I did it, and. I tried, I, man. I, I overthought it, and I, and I and I tried to make it sound all pretty and proper and shit. And he was just like, just, just can write it, you know. Don't it don't have to sound, but it is still a little, you know, because that's how I am. But uh, but so here it goes, anyways. My beloved, there is something about you that is so beautiful, okay. but I. He's saying this to himself. This to me. This to myself. Uh, 
there's something about you that is so beautiful, but I can't really describe it. You are loved and you should feel loved. I'm so lucky that you are part of my life. I've never felt this way before. Your smile lights up a dark room. Don't ever think any less of yourself. God has blessed you with so many talents and abilities, you just need to use them. It blows my mind how gifted you are. You motivate and challenge me to be a better person and lover. And that's what I wrote. And that's cool. Uh, and I did Those it. Those are the exact words he used to tell women. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. But my soul, that's what I wanted. That's what I longed for in my being. My soul, my mind, will, and emotions. My emotions, you know, emotions play a huge role in us. And, uh,. My soul was, was wanting that, was longing for that, but I was, I didn't want to pay attention to it. And who can give you that? Who can give you that? Me. I see it. Yeah. And I, and I, and I feel like at that point I had a breakthrough and I didn't look at, I didn't, yeah, and I, and I still struggled, and you know there were still situations and circumstances that come up, and I, I didn't know how to handle them, and and I was freaking out, and and I, I felt hurt. I felt because you got to understand this was a very toxic relationship, but I had to figure it out. Nobody else could do it for me. Nobody else could say walk away. Nobody else could say, you know. I had to figure it out on my own because even in that toxic relationship I still found out a lot of things about my own self that I didn't know and uh, so I stayed here like I stayed here a while I moved next door and you know moved over to the transition house and uh, and then I then I decided that we were gonna I was gonna start up start somewhere else start new we, me and her were gonna we're gonna do this and 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 it was gonna be good and and I had a plan and I had a job and I had all kinds of this lined up and I had all this this plan and plan and plan and plan and plan and but really it was it was me searching for the answers that I already knew that had to become reality to me. I had, it, I'm, I'm one of the type of people that I have to have proof before I can believe it or I can, you know what I mean? Like, I just can't, I, I just don't take words and, and, and believe it. I, I had to know it. Know it. In which he would kept telling me the whole time, you already know it. But you're going to do what you want to do. Well, you know, well. all right, hit me up on Facebook. <laughs> Might come fishing. Yeah. Kind of like reassurance, like you needed reassurance. About Pretty much, yeah. I, uh, but I wanted, man, I wanted it so bad. I wanted, I wanted to, to be happy with her. Be in a place that I didn't know. Be in a place I always thought, mm, let's live at the beach, you know, that'd, that'd be cool. You know, it sounds good. You know, it sounds awesome. And which, you know, it, it was good for a minute. Uh, well, you know, as good as it could be. Uh, until, you know, I found out what I, I did want to know, but I did want to know. Uh, and it hurt. And there was a lot of pain there, and it still hurts, and there's still a lot of pain there. But I had to find that I had to come to the realization that there's 
these these women are as sick as me. Or they wouldn't be with me. Or they wouldn't be with me. But I also had to come to the realization that I'm not that sick person anymore. And it took me going through some shit to figure out that I was worth more than shit. Way more than shit. And that I deserved better and that 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 if I would just be and I knew and I knew that I knew that I knew like a month before I, I got back here that I knew that that wasn't where I was supposed to be but I had to go out there and figure it out I had to go out there and find out it wasn't like I left here and I want to go get higher I want to and I wasn't doing anything like I used to do like I, I, I there was growth there there was a there was an actual I worked on on the soul some where I felt that 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 I wanted more that I wanted you know better I wanted I didn't want the same thing anymore I was tired of the same thing cuz it only brought me back to nothing you know and what did you do that actually changed your soul Tell you the truth, nothing. That's the truth. Because I'd been trying to do things for years and not doing anything. And but but Teal was trying to, to get me to 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 see that, like I said, not doing nothing is doing something. But you have to pay attention to that nothing. Or you ain't gonna get something out of it, mm. you know. And that nothing is when you're in your room and you're quiet, and you got all these thoughts and emotions running through your head and your mind, and you have to ask yourself why? Why am I thinking like? Why? Why is this? Why do I feel? Why do I feel upset? Why do I feel hurt? Why do I feel, you know, ashamed? Why do I feel all these things? And, and the reason is because your soul is longing for the opposite of that thing. Or, or, or the answer is there, you just have to tell yourself the answer. Because we all have the answers inside us. They're all inside us. You know, we have that ability. They're already... They're not right here. They're not right here because in between here is... It's crazy. But like I was saying out there on the porch, just before I came in here, you have to to make the, the connection. I don't know how, somebody told me one time how far, how, 18, inches. 18 inches. You have to, you have to make the connection in the 18 inches. That'd be a good sermon so one day if, you, if I was a preacher, inches. but I ain't gonna be no preacher. But yeah. that's, that's where, and, and, and there's, and you, at, least, at least while you're here, meet in the middle with it, you know? That's what I had to do, but I don't want you, I don't want you to have to do it three times. Some of us ain't gonna have three times. I'm lucky. I'm blessed that I have had three times to figure figure to to figure out that I knew the answer. There's so many boys taking the dirt nap right now. Ain't yeah. Yeah. I mean, my friend came through here. Boy, man, we grew up together, man. From the time we was five years old all the way up and he came in here bullshitted had 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 been clean for like six years no actually like ten years had gained so much like possessions and, and just worldly stuff you know and but he was lost too and and didn't you know and, and came here Ended up getting kicked out of here. Two weeks later, his mom texted me at, at midnight saying we lost him. So, 30, I've known the dude well over 25 years. You know, I was the first dude. I, I went, my mom found my, my old kindergarten yearbook and it said, who are your friends? It used to ask questions in front of the yearbook. It said, who are your best friends? And his name was first. And I was at five years old. So I mean, we—I knew this dude, man, and 
he ain't got another. They had two funerals last week, guys that ain't got another. You know, I'm, I'm thankful to God today that I had another. But I've, I've known so many people come through here with me that, ain't, that didn't have another. Just learned last night, or over the weekend, that a guy that I was here with uh, and knew out on the streets and everything got shot and killed in a home invasion. So, you know, I mean, we don't know when when the clock's up. And uh, but I still got a lot of I, got, I still got a lot of stuff, you know, and I still struggle. I still struggle with that song. You know, it comes up. It, 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 you know, because I'm I'm never going to be. I mean, just like Paul talks about it, things I want to do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do, I continue to do. You know, like it's the, and it's and it's like that that battle that we all are going through. You know, when you get still, but, it transcends the battle. Like like. Like when that girl said, uh, when you're in the, I'm going to do it, I'm not going to do it, you're in your yeah, ego. Yeah, that ego, that, that mask, that, that, you know, I said, man, I've been talking, jeez. It's cool. But anyways, uh, just like when that girl I was saying up here said, uh, is it okay if I don't talk to you no more? I'm like, sure, I don't give a shit. It ain't going to hurt my feelings. And that's growth. Because normally I'd be like, oh, please don't stop yeah. talking to me. Just put, what? What's going on? What's wrong? Yeah. And I was like, Psh, I care less. You're probably crazy anyways. It's probably just that craziness about me seeking a little more crazy, but not un not realizing I'm seeking some crazy. You know what I mean? Like I say, like I say, there's a battle that that still goes on, whether I'm aware of it or not, and I like to be aware of it. You know, and speed it up. This weekend, uh, I went on my on, I went home for the weekend, and uh, went to uh, Waffle House for breakfast in Bessemer Saturday morning with my mom and my dad. And in comes walking in that girl that from church from down there. That had, you know, that I thought this was going to be great and wonderful and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, <sighs> I'm hyperventilating. Like, what? Because I, like, took her down, you know. I'm, she, she didn't even know I was a heroin addict or anything. Like, she just thought I took some lower tabs and had back surgery and got hooked on lower tabs and this and that. And she didn't know I was putting that damn needle in my arm. And then she found out, and that's how it spiraled, spiraled fast. And I was like, I was like... I was like, Mom, you know who that is over there? She turned around. She said, that's that girl over there. I said, yeah, that's that girl. And she said, Mom said, why don't you say hey to her? Hey, how you doing? I was like, hey, hell no. Shit. You know I was in that girl? You disowned me, Mama. And uh, so anyways, like, I'm walking out. And I just glance over, and she waves, and she says, hey. And I, and I kind of, you know, make my way close to the table. Not invading their area or nothing, but she's like, hey, how are you doing? And I'm like, I'm doing great. You know, I'm working at Turning Point and clean, sober, you know, you know, doing, doing really good. And she said, well, that's good, she said. And then I said, you know, uh, ask her if you... I ain't going. I didn't keep. I wasn't gonna keep her long. But it was just cool to, to you know, to be able to say good things about myself that I know are true, instead of saying good things about yourself knowing they ain't true. You know what I mean? Because if somebody always asks, you ain't gonna run into somebody. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. You know when you really ain't. You know, and it and, and it and it feels it felt so good to be able to to look at her in the face. And, you know, basically, you know, not, I didn't apologize for nothing or anything because that's, there's a place and time for that if that ever, ever, you know, 
But it was just good to, to be able to, to, to look at somebody that I've hurt in the past because I was hurt, so I hurt somebody else. And it was good to just say, hey, you know, blah, blah, blah tell them what's going on with me, you know. And then, but, uh, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> But uh, uh, Sunday, I went. We went to to the restaurant that I was working at this last year. And uh, of all people, the GM is still there, and she sat us at our table, looked, turned, and looked at me, said, "Give me a hug." And I gave her a hug. She's like, "You look amazing." She's like, "She's like you." How are you doing? And, and just inquiring about, you know, what's going on with me and, and everything. God, you must have used to look real bad. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Sure, I can't change this. I wish I could, but I can't. But uh, it was just good, man. It was just good to be able to be like, you know, like, hey, I'm doing great. You know, I'm clean. I'm sober. All those things that, that I've always wanted to, to tell somebody and mean it, I can. And it's like it's like it, it builds your build, it builds you up. It, it, it's freeing. It, sun, when the sun sets free, it's free indeed. And I hold I, I like that verse, and and uh, it's it, it's a reminder verse for me because there was a time when I wasn't free, and but since he has set me free. From all that, and still setting me free, because his words, you know, the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So he's still setting me free. It's it's a process, and uh, it's good. It's a good thing, and uh, you know, I love all y'all, and I hope I hope you got some out of it. And if if you want to do some shit, talk to this dude when you got. Talk to this dude right here if you got, if you bring want money. to. Bring, bring, bring some cash, check. No, no check. No, 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 you don't want no check. Uh, I don't know, man. Just say just whatever. Y'all know, y'all, you, you know, he's, he's here. He's here every day. So, you know, if you want to do something different or if you want to not do nothing and, find, and do, gain a whole lot of something, Work on it, you know. Work on something. Figure it out. Figure out what your your soul wants. It's crying out for. You know that, that we tried to fill it with heroin and alcohol and and whatever else. I love y'all. stuff from last week, this week, here what we talk about. It's about uh, learning to surrender the ego. Surrendering the ego is not work. It's the opposite of work. <coughs> when we're working on something, that's ego. Um, when we're having these battles in our minds, that's ego. Who was I talking to yesterday? Come see my hand in here. Um... That's what you forgot. And you just remember that you forgot and you go, oh, okay. That's it. But he said he has to see something to believe it, but there were at least two points in his life he did something without seeing it first. And he went, he stepped into a weird place. This don't make no sense. Why am I doing this shit? Because the issue is not to go pick up magic rocks. <laughs> okay, there's no magic in the rocks. There's magic in the doing of it. I mean, I could have said do this four times a day. He said something about walk, walk around the basketball court yeah. like eight times or something. something. Some random Whatever. number. I, I remember you saying that one time. Too. You know, because the issue is submission of the ego. To something else, connecting that, coming to understand that we are not just our radar that's looking for something to eat or something dangerous. 
That's how we get programmed by the world system. Oh, appetite, shiny, titties, whatever. Or run away, you know, or run away because this is painful or scary or whatever. Um, and all radar sees is what it's programmed to see. It doesn't see, all it, if there's no rocks or no ships, it don't see nothing. <laughs> you know? Um, and he, you began a process because you said a while ago, I don't remember the words, but you were hungry for it. You know? Because it starts with curiosity and the hunger will grow. But I can't do it. Nobody can do it for you. Nobody can bless him, really. Um, he had the he had the key to his prison the whole time. You had the power to. You had abandoned that little boy, that sacred part of you, way back years ago. And he's sitting back there going, "I ain't pretty, and I ain't this, and I ain't that." And nobody. He don't even pay attention to me. He runs from me. What's wrong with me? You know that kind of stuff. And it's, all this is just metaphor, so. But, and but when he, um, and he, and you had a breakthrough, and you learned some stuff, and but you kept going through the same patterns over and over and over again because you were looking on the outside trying to fix it. Um, when we did, when we started doing that. I mean, we got a label. I'm codependent. Okay next and we move on and nothing really happens. I mean, y'all know what I'm talking about? When you, yeah. Yeah. you go to the head shrink and it gives you a diagnosis. That's social anxiety. Not big. Yeah, oh yeah, you have generalized that, anxiety disorder. General, yeah, GAD. So, I held on to that for a minute. No, I ain't got no idea. That's what's wrong. Shit, I can stand up here and talk. Yeah, man. Um, and the labels can be helpful. They give you a place to hang, a hook to hang your thoughts on. Um, but they don't, it's not the magic. Um, and after a while, you just got tired. And, and you had this big breakthrough mm -hmm. and still went out. And that's, he's not encouraging you to do that, but you're going to do whatever you're going to do. Yeah. It's like you told me. <laughs> Go ahead and knock yourself out. Baby boy. Baby boy. Um, but, and that's when I would mess with him, pick at him. I'm, I'm doing that on purpose. Sometimes I'm thinking intentionally. Sometimes I'm just being an ass, probably. Um, but I'm trying to save y'all some months and months and years. You know, me patting you on the head ain't going to help you. I love you, brother. Hey, I don't even fucking know you. How am I going to love you? <laughs> and I'm not saying don't do that with each other. That's, it's practice. It's virtual reality. You can play with it and practice it. But so even that, we sometimes we can feel accepted because we say the right words, but we don't accept ourselves. If I don't love myself, I cannot love nobody else. I can bullshit them. Say, so I love you, brother Jesus and Holy Spirit and Moses and shit, and we all, you know. <laughs> yeah. But the only one that can set you free is you in terms of receiving the grace of God that you already live in. <coughs> Reality don't change, your awareness of it changes and then you change and the pattern changes and then you create different patterns when you go to Gulf Shores. That's a good pattern. You know? It's a good pattern. I mean, even now, you can go back to Gulf Shores. I could have done it. I mean, yeah. I could have done it if I Because you know, the pattern is, is in there. That's the, this is, and then the, everything else just at least had a comes out of it. Partner that was on board too. All right, All right go eat, bye. Right. Good job, buddy. Good job.